it's time. Meet the future hog under the first hoop he ever shot on. I didn't even know this was the case, but this is like the first goal you've shot a basketball at. Yeah, so, it is. Uh, this place itself, what's the memory you have of it? Man, I just grew up around here. My dad, my dad used to work here, and uh, he's real close with Keith Jackson and uh, Keanu Cole and his two kids. So we, we all, all four of us, me, him, and my brother, we all just grew up around here, playing around, shooting, and playing football outside. Because back when I was younger, I played a lot of football. So. Yeah, and since we're already mentioning childhood, I mean, take me through your athletic journey as a kid. It actually started with me playing football. Yeah, that's where it all started. I played flag football, and uh, my brother played basketball. So I was the football player, he was the basketball player. So we, we, we both played both sports, and then he really just, he really influenced me to just go and stick to basketball. After I started getting older, them, them, uh, them linemen started getting bigger. I had to, <laughs> had to make that realization for myself. And, and I heard from an interview that you were really close with Miles growing up. And not only that, but he just motivated you to be a better, a better athlete, looking up to an older brother like that. So what was Miles, his impact in your journey growing up? He was, uh, he was definitely a, a constant competitor. I played against Miles almost every day outside of the house, uh, wherever we could play. I mean, if, it's, if it's in the street, we're just trying to get past each other. We just always competed against each other. And, you know, I was so much younger, it was almost like I, it was almost impossible to beat him. But I never stopped. He, he would never let me stop. My dad would never let me stop. So I just kept going and kept going at him. And uh, I lost, took a lot of L's, took a lot of losses. But I finally got to the point to where it becomes competitive. And then he really prepared me for the for all the all the challenges that I will that I will that I will face in in the life. Because just going to Florida, just going against competitors that I that I don't know that I'm not aware of that I might not that might seem that they're bigger, stronger, or whatever. I'm used to that. I'm used to playing somebody that I'm almost intimidated by it would be with my brother, so I'm not intimidated by anyone anymore. And growing up, what really gave you that competitive edge with sports? Because I think that's one attribute that a lot of kids that don't want to go on to play college ball might have lacked, right? But mm -hmm. growing up, obviously, you wanted to play with the best. So what instilled that with you? I would definitely say my brother. Just, just, just playing against him, playing against his friends. So. With him, with me following up after him, he, he uh, created this legacy throughout the city, and I'm and I'm just Miles' little brother. So I so I just became to have that name, and I have plenty of big bros. Everybody called me little bro, from Ray to Seth to everyone around the city. So, I and then me going to Florida, it's really me getting away from Arkansas, because here I was almost I had this uh I had an easier path here being Miles' little brother, but going out to Florida is a completely different path to where. I'm out here by myself. You, you can either sink or swim. And you mentioned that football was kind of the passion at first, and that's mm -hmm. when you started you off with sports, right? But when in that entire journey you figure out, hey, you know what? Basketball is what I should be doing, and that it's what I can do in the future, possibly even in college. I, I figured out. Well, I played my last football game in sixth grade. That's when I that's when I finished football. But I actually probably figured out that basketball was going to be it for sure in the fourth grade. But that was still like in the in the in the peak of my football career. I was um, well, my team was undefeated. I was the quarterback. We was doing really good. And then that fifth grade year, I think we might have we might have won the Super Bowl. But I was done after that. I, 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 I told I told coach I was done because I'm I'm tired of getting banged up. I got hurt a couple times playing quarterback, you know. So I was done. And then Coach Shawnee is, is was my coach, and he kept uh, he kept picking me up from school all the time. And he uh, and I would go to practice with them just because just those of my guys still out there and I just couldn't stay away. So I came back for that last year, but I told him I wasn't playing quarterback anymore because I was tired of getting hit. So I started, I went to wide receiver and that was my last year. So that's when it officially ended. And you going up through AAU and pretty much every, all of your time before high school hit, you know, what was the travel like? What was your youth basketball experience like? It was definitely a journey. I played with a couple, in a couple different leagues with a couple different teams. Uh, starting out, I played I played for the Arkansas Magic, and so that was that was my first AAU team ever. And then after that, I moved on, and I went to the Hawks. And that's when my dad started coaching. He coached at Hawks team, and but we weren't we weren't very good. We were just uh, picking up guys from around the city. Whoever wanted to play, we really just went out and played. And then it really started to my my the basketball career really started to get serious when I went. And I played for the Hawks, but my the coach was Coach Marlin and uh, Coach Delano, 
and that was and that's when we started going around the city winning a lot of games and we won the state tournament that year that's when that's when me and KK started playing together so so that, that team that team was really good we went out to nationals we went to or uh, New Orleans it was 72 teams we came in second so that, and we beat the number one team in the country in that tournament so that's, that's when it really started picking up and going full speed. And going through high school, right, and even before then, what was your dad's influence in your entire journey up to this day? Just with basketball and the path I'm on, it can get fast. Everybody's telling, you, telling me how good I am all the time. You're, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. But my dad's really there to keep me level-headed. He it keeps me motivated and uh, tells me there's, there's always work to be done. See, after, after I might come up with a big accomplishment, I might he, he, he's, he's definitely going to uh, show me that support and everything. He's happy for me and everything. But at some point, that's, that's over with. It was next. And then he also handles a lot of off-court stuff that, that, can be, that can be a weight on my shoulders if I had to deal with like the business side and all, and all that, that aspect of it. But he really takes that off me, takes, takes that off my hands. Great. And before we get on to your high school career, which was all over the place, you went to Florida eventually, let's just cap off childhood with asking, your time with the Razorbacks. I mean, were you a fan? I mean, what's the fandom from the Razorbacks like? Is that going back to your childhood? Well, when I was younger, I was really a Razorback football fan more than ever. Cause with uh, back when we had Joe Adams and Dennis Johnson, I was, that was that was my team. So I, so that's when I really became an Arkansas fan. And then that's when I was playing football around that time. So then I started just being a fan of the school period. And then growing up, I, I watched as Bobby Portis went and. Just and uh, just players like that. So I just grew up watching watching that. And moving on to high school, right? And instead of going, you know, through whole seasons from one place to another, Parkview, North Florida Rock, and then on to Florida. First, I want to ask just your impression and what the impre impression that it left on you, right? Your takeaway from your time, first of all, at Parkview, your freshman year. It was definitely a journey. My high my high school career starting at Parkview, but I feel like it was almost like a it was almost like God took me on this path on purpose, um, going from Parkview to North Little Rock to Montverde the way, it, the way it was because at every step I learned something else to help me, to help me for the next level. At Parkview, I came in as a freshman with playing with some of the top players in the country with Khalil and Javon and CJ and just players like that. that I'm, so I'm, I'm sitting there taking a back seat and competing against them in practice, not playing as much in the games, finding, finding my role, having a, having a score with limited minutes. And then I go to North Little Rock the next year, and then I have a bigger role. I'm uh, just, just just playing with the team that we had, and we was able to win a championship. But I'm, I'm in the game all game. We compete, and we going at it. We just is, we going to battle. And then I go to the next level, and uh, we go to Montverde, and we're playing a uh, national schedule. So now I go back to my freshman year to where I have more of a role that I have to fit. But at the same time, I have to have to pick up from the, from the North Little Rock times and have that same grit and able to play a full game and just and be and that's why I feel like it's a stepping stool because each each level prepared me for the next. And it was a very unorthodox high school career going one place to the next, but it seems like you just said it, it's almost like it helped. Each place had its own meaning for you and it built you who the player you are and the man you are right now, right? So to have that change and to want that change, being a kid that's so young that usually a kid that age just kind of wants to have that one group right that mm -hmm. one team for four years that one school what was it that made you want to move around and better yourself that way I would say it's just me chasing competition uh, in in 10th grade we won the national champion I mean when we won the state championship I was the MVP so almost like we hit a ceiling right there so now I'm just out here looking for the next competitor and that's why I felt that's why I felt it was on the national scale so that's when I wanted to compete against national competition and moving from Arkansas high school basketball to Florida high school basketball, you mentioned that it's kind of like freshman year all over again because you had to build yourself back up, right? Mm -hmm. What was the talent, what was the atmosphere difference between going from Arkansas to Florida your junior year? My junior year, that, that's a different team than I played on last year. So um, it was definitely a journey because that's when I was really trying to find my place because I started out the year with an injury. So I, so I sat out the whole preseason my first time touching the court was the purple and gold game. So I was, I was already behind on plays, on everything. So I had to really work my way up and then just, just, just make it work. 
And I could tell just on paper, looking at your high school basketball career, that you knew like basketball is the goal. Like you're here, you want to get a scholarship. But a lot of the time, it's being a high schooler, being what was it, 13, 15 mile, or not mile, but hours away from home, mm -hmm. that sucks, right? But to be in Florida and be missing out on some of the your, your local town and your family, right? But that sacrifice, why did it mean so much to you? That's exactly what it was. It was definitely a sacrifice. Um, I sacrificed two years at home but I felt like the benefits outweighed what I was sacrificing. So I felt like it was worthy of, of the sacrifice because the, my journey and my verb was more than just on the court. I, I, have, I have friends nationwide. My, my dad and mom always joke and say that uh, I can go, I can go all, all the way across the world with no money because I have people that can look out for me all over the world because my verb has students from 90, 93 different countries. So a lot, of the, a lot of the benefits that I got from Mount Verde aren't necessarily on the court, but on the same time, it, there, is, there is a lot on the court. This year, with the team that we had, I'm able to play with other great players. And that's a, that's a skill that a lot of people lack and that a lot of, nobody really pays attention to. Because when you get to the NBA, everybody's great. When you're in high school, you might be the only great player on your team. So it's a different game, and you have to be able to be successful with other players. Your high school basketball career so far has come, came off to me like iron sharpens iron, right? Always jumping up to that next competition level, right? Mm -hmm. So from the start of high school all the way to the end, how did competition grind you into who you are right now and the type of player that you are? I feel like I've always been in the iron sharpens iron uh, space. So when I was younger, it was really, well, when I was younger, it might, I, not, might not have even been iron sharpening iron because my brother was iron, his friends were iron. But I wasn't, I wasn't iron yet. It was, they was, they was molding my iron, I could say. So now, now that I'm iron, I'm, I'm able to go complete, co compete against other, other top players. So when I was at Parkview, it's iron sharpening iron because I'm, 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 low, I'm younger and I'm competing against other really good players. So it's the same, same mentality, same, uh, same North Little Rock. And then definitely at my verb because practices were, Practices were ruthless. We was in there going at each other, talking stuff. You know how it goes. Just competing every single day. And when I say every single day, I mean no days off. Sunday, our only day off. But if we on a turn, if we got a tournament, then we back in there, and we, we back in there on Monday, and uh, we practicing on game days. It's just, it's just like I say. I was I was thrown into a pool. You can either sink or swim, because if you if you take a day off, your spot can be gone that quick. And being in Florida, you know, being so far away from home, was there a moment in time where you just got really homesick and it's tougher than people might have imagined it? I would definitely say I did. I didn't anticipate that it would be that, it would be that much of a difference because when I'm at home, I, I, can, I spend a lot of time in my friend's house anyways. So it's like, so I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm not just necessarily a homebody. But at the same time, once I got that far away, and time started to pass, I realized how much I missed home. And that's, that, had, that, had, that had part, that had some, something to do with me wanting to come back home and go to school. But just to, give, just to answer your question, I feel like around the holidays, when you, when you really start to feel it, and like missing, missing Thanksgiving at home, um, Christmas, we didn't, we didn't get to come home for Christmas this year. It's just a lot of sacrifices like that. But I mean, that, that's something that I think also prepares you for life in basketball because how many college kids just go home for Thanksgiving or uh, oftentimes Christmas. Absolutely, yeah. And going forward, you know, through high school, you end up getting a lot of interest from colleges and you ended up getting these stars, right, and this, and this attention online. So as a kid being only 16, 17, going on 18, to have that attention, how do you keep level-headed? I know you have your dad, but just you yourself, how do you kind of stay selfless and um, stay humble? Um, and you know the cliche saying there's always someone else working somewhere in the world and that's true and you never know when you're gonna meet them so I feel like I'm, I'm naturally personally I just don't like feel, feeling like I'm being outworked so if I if I'm, I might just I might go work out and I then I come home and I'm ready to relax and now my brother's going to work out we, we'll, we would have both only worked out once, but I feel like if I'm, if I'm in here chilling and he's working out, then he's, be, he's getting better than me, so I gotta go work out again. And that's my mindset that I just, that's just something I really don't like, because I feel like if you outwork me and you beat me, then you deserve to beat me. I don't deserve to win if you, if you put more work in, it's just as simple as that. Sure. Was there a time, a memory from Montbird that is that you hold closer to your heart right now, your last year of high school basketball? 
It was, it was plenty of times this last year, definitely, because my team was more than just a basketball team. We're a family off the court and then on the court. Just being in Florida, everybody, nobody on the team is really from Florida. We're all from different parts of the world, so we're all coming, coming there together. And we literally, literally the world, we got Canadians, we got everybody. So coming at this one place, and then we're just, we're in, we're, in there, we're in here together. So we spend a lot of time together, we eat together, we just all the time, we're always together. So, so it's, it's plenty of times during this last year that I could say I have many memories that can, I hold dearly. And you finishing out high school out of state made a lot of people think, hey, for college, that might want this kid to go out of state and not go back to his home state of Arkansas, right? But when did that become a big reality and a huge interest for you to say, you know what, Arkansas is where I belong? I would say going away from home. You know, you know how they say if you love something, then let it go. And if it comes back, it was yours in the first place. So I feel like me leaving home and, and, and getting, getting a away from home experience out here, out here with everybody, really brought me closer to home because I was missing home, I was missing my family. And then, I mean, I haven't played here in about two years. So I want, my, I want my people to see what I've become away from home. So I definitely you, say. You just mentioned like showing your people what you've become, right? Well, I heard multiple times in past interviews from you saying that, hey, like I want to help put Arkansas basketball on the map to show out their soul, all this talent in state that are that's staying in state, going to Arkansas. So for you personally to really represent Arkansas talent like that, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, it means the world because I feel like there's a lot of talent in Arkansas that goes unnoticed because it's hard to really get, get exposure from Arkansas. Because in 10th grade, well, and well, in my bird this year, I I caught an alley oop dunk and dunked on somebody, and then that that video went viral. It blew up. It was on it was on every social media site you could find. But my 10th grade year, I went baseline and reverse dunked on two people, and the only person that recorded was my mom. So it, it's harder to really get exposure when you're somewhere, because in states like California or Texas, it's, it's Ball is life and slam, and everybody's at every game, so anything you do will get publicized. But when you're here, uh, hooping on the backcourt, nobody really sees it. And of course, coming back to your hometown isn't the only reason you chose Arkansas. So if you could pinpoint that one thing that really sealed the deal for you to say, you know what, it's my hometown, but this reason right here is why I want to be a Razorback. What I couldn't necessarily say it was one specific thing that really nailed it in. It was just a compilation of many things with the family, with the coaching staff, with the other guys going to, with the environment up there. It's just pl plenty of things that played a part. And Mus, of course, you've talked a lot about how awesome Mus was in the recruiting trail, right? Mm -hmm. But how was he so charismatic and uh, believable with recruitment and showing you what the potential is like for the Arkansas program in your time there? I would definitely say I could tell that Mus was really genuine and just a real dude. So a lot, throughout the recruiting trails, it's a lot of people out there just telling you whatever you want to hear but he wasn't necessarily doing that, he was telling the truth. It was stuff that he would say that might not even be the most pleasing thing to hear, but it's the truth. And he would sacrifice you, he would sacrifice your feelings just so he can tell you the truth, and I really appreciated that. And then just knowing his journey, just knowing he's been through, what, what, he, what he's been through in his journey, he still, and he still uh, fought and stayed on track, just shows that he's, that he's mentally prepared to conquer any goal. Yeah, and here we are in Little Rock right now, and we're three hours away from Arkansas, you know, University of Arkansas, and yet everyone loves the Razorbacks in Arkansas, and it's this huge deal, so you just saw it. Jalen, KK, I mean, Devo, they became Razorbacks. You're becoming a Razorback even though you left the state, right? So what is the pool to be a Razorback when you grow up in Arkansas? Growing up in Arkansas, you definitely are gonna see Razorback stuff everywhere. You're gonna see Razorback fans everywhere, so it's like instilled into you. And I really didn't even notice how much of an impact it had on me until I moved away from Arkansas. And then, and then I'm having to argue with kids from all over the world how good Arkansas is, how, how, what, they, what, they don't, what they don't know. I'm, I'm coming up with plenty of facts that they never heard, but it really just, had, just gave me this sense, this, like, this sense of like, home. And I'm defending my home. And you already said that your goal, your freshman year, is you're going to win a, you know, a national title, and you really believe it, right? But as, for a personal level, the growth that you can have from this point and a year from now, what do you hope that to be? I would definitely say I, my number one goal is to 
to better to better my team and, and make me able to help my team win. Just play my part. Cause my dad, my dad always says this when we we might be getting in the car about to go somewhere. If if we're going to my brother's practice, then you're not essential. Therefore, you don't have to be in the car. You can be left. So it, that and that mindset it takes me past that one scenario. If I'm on a team and I'm not put, I'm not carrying my I'm not carrying my weight. Then you're not essential. You don't have to play. I want to I want to be sure that I be able to carry my weight and help my team be successful. And I know your dad and his saying is smooth sea never makes a skillful sailor. Yeah. So since you've been through so much competition, three different schools already, and you've went through this national attention and you're going to be a Razorback, what is gives you that X factor on the court that might not a lot of other freshmen have just in that sense? I would, I would say that I've been through so much. So I, I, I didn't have a smooth seat. I, like I say, my, my, my high school journey was very un unorthodox. So a lot of people didn't go through what I've been through. And therefore, I feel like I've, I've learned from all the lessons that I've, went, that I've been around, that I've went through, and I, cause I, I made it through them all. Therefore, my end, my end uh, product is battle tested. And I know Mus was talking about that he was impressed with the fact that you read the entire NLI just to make sure you knew what you were signing. And that just goes to show like your attention to detail. So can you give some more insight and the attention to detail you have the scouting reports, the game itself? I'll say that also comes from my dad because he always um, emphasizes patience. And, you know, this, re this recruiting, this, this whole this time period can go by so fast that sometimes you have to slow down and really realize what you're doing. So I felt like with a with a contract, you should never re, you should never sign a contract without reading it. I want to be sure and be 100% positive on what I'm signing or what I'm, what I'm what I'm putting my name on. And I feel like a lot of people really wanted me to hurry up and do it do it do it faster. But I feel like it's it's not you signing the paper, it's me. So I want to be 100% confident and 100% sure on what I'm signing. So speaking of being 100% sure, you saying that. You guys can win a national title. Why not us at Arkansas next year? What makes you 100% sure? I mean, I feel like we're all shooting on the same hoop. We're all playing on the same floor. So we just knowing with the coaching staff we have and the team we have, why not us? And you going on to play at that next level, SEC, compared to Montverde, the national, the international talent there, right? How excited are you? What makes you so excited to be playing at that top level? Uh, like I say, I'm always chasing competition. And I feel like this is the highest level of competition that I can compete on right now. Therefore, I'm excited for it. And one thing that stuck out to me, what you said, is that, hey, like, uh, you know, people, like, we shouldn't be afraid to play other teams. They should be afraid to play us because we're going to be the champs, right? Mm -hmm. What gives you that confidence? Since you've played against so many guys and you've had this journey, but what has instilled that confidence in you that you already know in your heart, like, you guys have that potential next year, no matter what anyone says? I would say that I have played against nationwide competition. So I know, I know what the best looks like. And I feel like the guys that we have aren't, aren't anything different than the best that I've seen anywhere else. Just because we might, have, might, we might not have the same media, the same publicity that they have, doesn't mean that when we get on the court, when it's me and you looking, looking eye to eye on the court, you're not any better than any of the guys that we have. For sure, and you know, I'm new to Arkansas. I got here during the basketball season, right? First thing that I noticed about Razorbacks basketball, holy cow, the fans are crazy, right? So speak on that, just the fans of the Razorbacks and what it means for them to be so crazy, whether it's in the bud or out. I would say definitely going into the, going and uh, watching games in the bud, it's, uh, it's a crazy atmosphere and I can't wait to play in front of all those fans. And then going, going away, I feel like just the, just the team that we have we're going to have this brotherhood to where it's us against the world when we're, when we're playing away games. So I, I also want to experience that and want to feel that. Just I, I, like I might get a dunk and nobody in the crowd, nobody in the crowd says anything, but my whole team is, 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 is turning up. And then that's the, that's the brotherhood that I want to be a part of. Sure. And one reason that has to be in there why you're so confident about this coming year is the recruiting class because you're not the only stud in this recruiting class. It's ranked mm -hmm. number five in the nation last time I checked. So speak on that. This recruiting class that you're a part of, I know you're close to KK, but what do you feel about the group? I feel like this group that we have coming in has all the pieces we need. Even with uh, Vance having the size that he has and ability to shoot, with Jalen Tate being able to, being able to uh, play offense and defense. I, heard he, I hear he's a lockup defender. 
and then just knowing what KK brings to the table, you know, playing with him so long, and then Devo with, the, with his length, ability to shoot the ball, ability to score, and ability to pass, and then Jalen brings everything else off the boards. He's able to stretch the floor, pull up, pull up shots, pull up mid-range, and he has a great IQ. And one question I've heard from a lot of people is, well, how do we know how well they're going to gel? Like these guys, they're freshmen, you never know. But you've played with so many different teammates, you've had to gel because each team is a family in their own right, mm -hmm. right? So you with so many teammates in the past, you have all that experience of gelling with teammates. What makes you comfortable with you yourself going to this new team and becoming best buds and have that chemistry on the court? I feel like I've had to gel with a lot of teams that I'm, I have no familiar, familiarity with anybody on the team. So I'm, ne I'm, going, I'm joining the team in St. Louis, in Florida, of guys that I've never played with before in my life. And then now I'm just going, I'm going up the street to play with guys that I've been playing with or against my whole life. It's just, it doesn't compare. It's going to be a lot easier than I, I feel like it will be. For sure. And, you know, first time I, I met you, and the only time I've ever met you, you were a commit. And now I'm seeing you, you're a signee. So what's the difference in mindset? knowing that it is a done deal, you're going to be an Arkansas Razorback. And you don't have really that option to maybe flip. Mm -hmm. I feel like when I committed, that option went out the window. Because when I put my name on something, I, I'm, I make it a point that I want to fulfill that. It's, it's almost like a promise. And so I feel like now that I've actually officially signed, is now it's time to get to business. And that work ethic of getting to business, what does that look like? What's the work ethic behind your success? That's when you really got to put the tunnel vision in. I'm not worried about the media. I'm not worried about this or that. It's just me on the court every day uh, in the weight room, just trying to get bigger, faster, stronger, and prepare and to help my team be successful. And I know you're a young guy, and you're only going to be a freshman in college next year, right? But your goal in your basketball career, whether it be community, whether it be on the court, is there one thing that in your head that you think, you know what, if I do anything with my basketball career, it's that? I would definitely say that I want this, I want my basketball career to elevate me to a level to where people listen. Because I want to be able to help, help my community, help, help, just help everybody around me. And I feel like once I get to a certain level, everybody's going to want to listen. And then, they, then, I can, then I can tell them what I have to say. Are there players that you know of right now that you really look up to, that it, maybe their game or with the way they're off the court? Yeah, there's plenty of players in the NBA that I, that I take pieces from. You know, my, Devin, my favorite player is Devin Booker. And then I love C.J. McKellen's mid-range game. Uh, we got Jason Tatum off the dribble mid-range game is crazy. Uh, he's mid-post action with um, Stanley Johnson, a very undersized for his position, but his ability to, to, to translate and play and guard a lot of bigger, faster, stronger guys. And then Draymond Green, his tenacity on defense and ability to rebound. A lot of people don't even know he's 6'5", 6'6", and going against seven footers every night. So that takes a different kind of different kind of animal to do, to really do. So it's just different players across the league that I take pieces and bits from. Yeah, and it seems like just from that answer and also your tape that you do like to be fluid with your position. You kind of like a Swiss Army knife. You can do it all in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be on either side of the court, right? So how much pride do you take in that that you can be a versatile player for the Razorbacks? I mean, I'm a basketball player. I don't necessarily have a set position that I have to do. I'm just willing to do whatever it takes to help my team win. And so looking back after these like, two crazy years and then the years at Arkansas that went all over the place and the recruiting and everything, why, what makes you think that that time in high school you wouldn't want to take a second of it away? I think that definitely comes from valuing your experiences. A lot, of, a lot of things I probably don't appreciate as much as I will in the future, but me knowing that I'm going to appreciate it in the future makes me want to appreciate it more right now. So I just value every moment of it. Awesome stuff. And Muss himself, and I know that you already talked on Muss a little bit, but you know, you know his resume and him having NBA experience, right? So of all the coaches you could have gone to, because you must have talked to hundreds of coaches out there that you could have gone to all these different schools, what made you confident that Muss was the head coach that could groom you to be an NBA talent? I would say the fact that he took, he took, a, he took the time to really get to know me as a person. Uh, outside of basketball, he was really, he was really um, fluid in the way that he recruited me. He was very, he paid, he paid attention to detail, and that's something that attracts me. And um, just, I, like I say, his tenacity, his journey, what he's been through, and then, and then just the, and then what he built in Arkansas this year, because only he only had one year to work with a, with a group of guys that he never, he never recruited, he didn't know before he came here, and what he was able to do with them that, that shows all that I need to see.
Awesome, man. I know that, like Isaiah Joe, he played with your brother, right? And so you're kind of, you can kind of go in there, and so did Desi, right? And Ethan, yeah. Yeah, and so you already can know some of these guys from your childhood, right? So those guys, the Razorbacks, they're already there. What makes you so excited to play with them? Like I said, with my brother being my older brother and being a pioneer, and him creating a legacy, and I was following behind him. Those are my big brothers that's up there already with Desi and Isaiah and Ethan and guys that, I, that I've always been in the gym with, just, just not big enough to get on the court. Now I'm big enough to get on the court, so I'm just looking forward to that. And on a personal note, one thing I have noticed from you from an interview that really stuck out to me was, hey, you know, I'm coming from Florida. That means that whenever I want to go see my family, it's a two-hour drive, it's not a 15-hour drive or whatever it is, right? So yeah. on a personal note, how cool is it going to be for the time in Arkansas to be close to home? It's going to be great just having my family being able to come to each to, to, to all my games, all my home games at least. It's, it's an experience that I feel like I missed out on, but I sacrificed it. It was, really, it was, it was, uh, it was worthy of the sacrifice, but now it's, time, and now it's time to really get that time back. And I know you grew up as a football fan and you really appreciated the Razorbacks football team, but I know there's kind of a debate going on with Arkansas fans of are we a football school, are we a basketball school because we bring in such huge numbers to the bud. Do you think it's a basketball school and why or why not? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a basketball or a football school. I mean, I feel like we're, it's a school with two great programs. Therefore, I feel like it can be either one. It just depends what kind of fan you are. If you had any message for what people can expect out of you, whether they're Razorbacks fans or not, this coming year, what would it be? It's time. <laughs>